Uh, I'm Steve Vincent, so I'm uh, an Associate Professor uh, at QUT School of Optometry and Vision Science and a researcher in the Contact Lens and Visual Optics Laboratory. And my areas of research are contact lenses, visual optics and refractive error development. I'm Scott Reid. I'm an Associate Professor also at the School of Optometry and Vision Science here at QUT. And my main research interests are um, ocular imaging and refractive error and myopia research. So uh, Scott and I have collaborated on uh, a range of projects over the past uh, decade, primarily in the fields of myopia and ocular imaging. And during that time, we've published about 30 research papers together, but uh, this is our personal record for uh, a single issue. So uh, over the past five years, I guess a lot of our research has focused on some of the topics that these papers are cover, so OCT imaging of the retina and the choroid. Um, so we know that these tissues undergo significant changes while myopia develops and progresses, and we know that the choroid looks to be a biomarker for eye growth. So um, given it's only probably in the last decade or so that we've been able to reliably image the choroid, um, a lot of the research findings that we talk about in the papers um, have only happened in recent years. So we thought it was pretty important at this stage to communicate some of these recent findings using OCT, looking at the choroid in myopia, um, to communicate these with the readers of clinical and experimental optometry. The original research papers that we, uh, we've published in this special issue, they sort of um, from the work of one of our recent QUT PhD graduates, Hussain Yazdi, and they sort of highlight how different aspects of OCT imaging, such as uh, the number of B scans averaged per individual line scan or the specific region of the posterior eye examined influenced the repeatability of choroidal thickness measures both centrally and in the uh, periphery. And this has implications for um, understanding how accurate our clinical measures are. So I think it's particularly important for how we can sort of optimise um, the image quality and how repeatable our OCT images are. Um, and helps, I guess, provide us a benchmark um, to, be, to see what might be considered as instrument noise rather than a true clinical change in thickness when we're measuring the choroid using OCT. So we know that um, recent studies show us that the choroid looks to play a role in uh, lots of different eye conditions, actually. So um, understanding and then applying the most reliable methods for imaging the choroid is really going to be important for both clinical um, use of OCT, but also for research looking at the choroid using OCT as well. So I guess starting with the, um, the review paper that we have on OCT imaging um, in the choroid, um, that really is giving us an overview of the types of changes that happen in the choroid as part of normal ageing, particularly during childhood, um, as well as how, what happens to the choroid when myopia develops and progresses, um, how the choroid changes during high myopia, so in pathological myopia, and also the changes that happen in the choroid um, when we do clinical interventions um, for myopia, so things like um, orthokeratology, atropine, or light exposure, how the choroid changes uh, when those types of things happen. Um, so because we know from that research, I guess, that choroidal changes look to be a biomarker for eye growth, so um, we think that clinicians are going to find this pretty useful, particularly in the future, as they may be able to use measurements of the choroid to better understand perhaps a child's risk for being um, a fast myopia progressor or for developing myopia, perhaps, um, or potentially use these measurements as a marker of how, say, effective a myopia control therapy might be. We just had a comment on the um, uh, one of the original research papers. One one practical outcome from one of the original research papers was that averaging uh, 30 B scans per uh, OCT line scan seems to provide accurate measures of choroidal thickness and increasing this number of average scans only increases the duration of the scan with no really um, significant improvement in the accuracy of the scan. So I think, yeah, there's probably a, a number of different areas that we're, I guess, currently looking at, but probably one of the um, one of the key areas that we're working on at the moment is um, using or developing new software to automatically detect and segment the different layers that we see in both anterior and posterior OCT images. Um, and we think this is going to allow us to um, 
faster, more reliably analyse what's happening in those ocular tissues, both in healthy eyes and diseased eyes, eyes wearing contact lenses, um, allows to look at those changes, how they occur in normal eye growth with myopia progression and eye disease as well. So effectively developing new software methods, which um, at the moment we're looking at methods based around artificial intelligence, so sort of AI-based methods to give us faster, more reliable analysis of images, um, which is going to, I guess, also allow us in the future to um, take much more detailed measurements of the choroid, um, as well as looking at a much wider area of the eye as well. So rather than just focusing on a small region at the posterior eye, um, expanding to a much wider region as well, because these analysis methods will allow us to be much faster and also uh, more reliable in looking at those, um, those OCT images. Yeah, you know, it is a massive project and um, yeah, I guess it's about sort of just keeping to refining the software um, and finding better ways to improve it until you get a point where you sort of reach that threshold and um, you can't improve it anymore. Yeah. So it's a very fast moving field, I guess, as well in terms of um, measurement techniques. So OCT um, imaging methods are, are improving all the time, so they're becoming faster and uh, more reliable as well. So um, I guess it's a matter of the software as well, keeping up with the um, their developments in in the the hardware also. So it's certainly something that is an, is an ongoing um, an ongoing issue to try to improve things all the time.